It had only been half a year, and Li Jun, once elegant and free-spirited, now bore the marks of time with graying temples and a world-weary look. Si Yu looked at the man before her, opened her mouth to speak, but held back her words. Li Jun caught Si Yu's expression, ran his hand through his disheveled hair, and said, It turned white long ago, but I didn't bother to dye it. Si Yu nodded, stepped aside, and Li Jun walked in, sitting silently on the sofa. Si Yu swiftly poured tea, carefully considering her words, and asked in a hushed tone, How is the family? Li Jun spoke hoarsely, My son left two months ago. I tried everything I could think of, but couldn't make him stay. He lowered his head, slowly turning the teacup, seemingly reluctant to show Si Yu his overwhelming grief. Si Yu simply said, Condolences. Li Jun sighed, like a limp vegetable, boneless and meatless on the sofa, dejectedly stating, You know, no matter how much money I make, it can't bring back my son's life. Si Yu dared not interrupt, wearing her sadness on her face. She knew Li Jun needed someone to talk to at this moment, and she was content to be that person. Li Jun leaned back on the sofa, gazing at the ceiling in a daze. At that moment, Li Jun suddenly grabbed Su Yu's hand, sat up straight, and with eager eyes, said, Su Yu, have a child for me. Su Yu was taken aback, what? Li Jun's cloudy eyes gradually brightened, have a child for me. I'll give you one million for a girl, two million for a boy. After giving birth, take the money and leave. We'll have no more ties. Su Yu was somewhat angry, Jun Ge, we didn't discuss this when we were together. Li Jun's gaze was urgent, times change. Trust me, I won't cheat you. I just want a child of my own. My wife is 48 years old, in poor health, and can't have more children. We started from scratch together, and divorce is not an option. You've been with me for so long, understanding everything. I don't want to go through the trouble of finding someone else. Su Yu's heart was in turmoil due to Li Jun's request, and her head was spinning from the one or two million offers. She was being led by Li Jun's words, subconsciously considering the feasibility of this matter. The first thought in her mind was, how can I ensure I get the money after giving birth and not fall into a trap? Then she shook her head, dispelling this dangerous idea. What was she doing? Is having a child as simple as pressing lips together? What does having a child mean? It means leaving indelible scars on her young body, a permanent stain on her romantic history, or, to put it more bluntly, a comprehensive devaluation of herself. Compared to the impact on the rest of her life, can one or two million compensate enough? Who can guarantee that she won't regret it in the future? More importantly, who knows what risks are hidden in such entanglements? Of course, this is only one aspect, and there is another crucial issue. If Li Jun hadn't brought up this request today, Si Yu was prepared to directly break up with him. Originally, Si Yu planned to stick with Li Jun for a few more years, enjoying the carefree days without worrying about food and clothing. Who would have expected his son to fall ill suddenly? This unforeseen event finally made Si Yu see what kind of person she was. When Li Jun left, he didn't even give her notice. Si Yu learned about it through his friend's dynamic updates on social media. During the six months Li Jun spent abroad accompanying his son for treatment, Si Yu was completely ignored, with no calls, no WeChat messages, and no money transfers. The more Si Yu thought about it, the more aggrieved she felt. Initially, they agreed on a paid arrangement, he paid her a salary, and she played the role of his lover. Yet, she endured for six months, relying solely on her savings. Li Jun didn't even bother to explain. After the heartache came despair, and Si Yu's body and heart felt empty. In every lonely night, she struggled to sleep, unable to stop her mind from wandering. Through the experience with Li Jun, she finally understood that a lover is just a man's tool, to be picked up and used when needed, and ignored completely when not. If a woman wants lasting love, she should find a reliable and honest man for a serious relationship and marriage. With this in mind, Si Yu decided to venture out and explore the world, even asking her fellow villagers to help introduce potential partners. She initially thought her only flaw was being financially supported by someone, but soon, the men introduced by her fellow villagers made her realize her true position. She was too lazy to recall the detailed blind date processes because it was too painful. Among the men she met, the one with the best conditions was 32 years old, less than 1.7 meters tall, an ordinary office worker earning 8,000 yuan per month, barely managing a worn-out apartment. Si Yu started to panic, finally willing to dispel her self-perception of being young and beautiful and face herself correctly. 
The result was that she found herself lacking in every aspect except for being young and beautiful. The potential matches were men with similar conditions. If she wasted a few more years, what kind of person would she end up with when her youth and beauty faded away? After thinking for a few days, Su Yu decided to seize the tiny advantage of being young and beautiful and find a decent man to marry as soon as possible. Unexpectedly, while she was searching around, someone had already placed her in their heart. During that time, Su Yu frequently visited a milk tea shop, always ordering a cup of warm milk green tea. On a rainy day, when the shop was nearly empty, she sat by the window, slowly sipping her drink. The tall and handsome guy from the shop suddenly appeared beside her, delivering a moose cake. Su Yu wanted to pay, but the guy, named Feng Xiaoyang, refused to accept. It was then that Su Yu found out he was the owner of the shop. They talked and laughed, and from that day on, lonely Su Yu would often go to sit with Feng Xiaoyang. In front of Feng Xiaoyang, Su Yu presented herself as an unemployed person. Feng Xiaoyang was very enthusiastic, not only refusing to take money for her milk tea but also actively helping her find a job. Even though Su Yu lacked some insight, she knew that a man wouldn't be nice to her for no reason. The affection in Feng Xiaoyang's eyes was so obvious, almost overflowing. After some time of getting to know each other, Su Yu silently evaluated Feng Xiaoyang's overall conditions. He was young, tall, handsome, kind-hearted, and although he didn't own a house, he had a business. He used the down payment money to open the milk tea shop. Moreover, he was an only child. Thinking of the previous blind date candidates, she felt that they couldn't compare to Feng Xiaoyang. Su Yu wasn't only interested in money. Even if Li Jun was a messy and greasy man, she wouldn't want to be financially supported by him no matter how much he offered. Su Yu and Feng Xiaoyang seemed to have a telepathic connection. As Su Yu came to her realization, Feng Xiaoyang timely confessed his feelings. The two young people, perfectly matched in appearance, thus began their journey together. Being with Feng Xiaoyang felt completely different from Li Jun. In Feng Xiaoyang's eyes, she was the only one, the baby, the couple under the sunshine, and they had a future. Although they couldn't spend money extravagantly, the happiness felt solid and was something Su Yu had always yearned for but never dared to expect. Su Yu's parents divorced when she was very young, quickly remarried, and she became a child with no one to care for. After failing the high school entrance exam, she was thrown into a mediocre technical school, spent three aimless years, and then entered society, stumbling through a challenging period before finally ending up in the bed of an older man. Feeling empty and lost, accompanying Li Jun to sleep was just a way to escape reality and live a little easier. However, as she grew older, the reality she had been avoiding would inevitably catch up with her. Unless she chose to end her life, she had to plan for the future. Li Jun couldn't support her indefinitely. Just as he wouldn't be with his wife forever, what would Su Yu do in the future? Despite the world not treating her well, she was still attached to it. There were so many beautiful clothes, delicious foods, and captivating dramas. If she wanted to openly enjoy life, she could only return to the normal track, like most people. Due to her own incompetence, she had to rely on a man she could depend on. Feng Xiaoyang was the kind of man she needed. Every day spent with him made Su Yu more certain. She couldn't explain why, it was just where her heart led her. It felt like she couldn't deceive herself. During that time, Su Yu even forgot about the unresolved support relationship. When Li Jun entered the room, her immediate thought was, Oh, Li Jun is back. It's perfect, I need to say goodbye to him. She didn't expect that after a long absence, Li Jun would push her to a crucial decision. Faced with the choice between one or two million and Feng Xiaoyang, Su Yu was leaning towards Feng Xiaoyang. The situation was clear, if she had a child for Li Jun for the money, she would definitely lose Feng Xiaoyang. In the future, she wouldn't find a man better than him. It just wasn't worth it. However, she didn't know how to reject Li Jun appropriately. After all, this was a man who had just experienced the pain of losing a child, and he was also her former financial supporter, she was used to obeying him. 3 million. Just as Su Yu hesitated, Li Jun suddenly said, I'll give you 3 million. Have a child for me, whether it's a boy or a girl. I'll pay you 1 million up front, another million after you get pregnant, and the final million after giving birth. I'm not aiming for anything else, just a secure and worry-free arrangement, knowing the child's background. Su Yu's mind went blank, cautiously asking, how do you explain this to your wife? Li Jun, somewhat impatient, waved his hand, you just focus on giving birth and taking the money. Don't worry about anything else. 
I'll take the child back, but I won't divorce my wife. The child can call her mom in the future, and she won't kick the child out. Feeling even more uncertain, so you wondered, what if Lee Jun's wife turned out to be a tough nut to crack? After some thought, she forced a smile and said, Jun GE, let me think about it. Even if I decide to have a child, I need to have some checkups and take care of my health, right? My menstruation has never been regular, and there's no guarantee I can conceive even if I want to. After sending Li Jun away, Su Yu anxiously went to find Feng Xiaoyang. She wanted to gain more determination from Feng Xiaoyang's love. Even if she wavered due to the temptation of three million, she still leaned towards choosing Feng Xiaoyang. As she helped out in the milk tea shop, which had many customers, Feng Xiaoyang made a cup of milk green tea for her. Seizing the opportunity, he held her hand and earnestly said, My mom called me today, and I mentioned our situation to her. My mom wants me to bring you home. Su Yue exclaimed, ah. Feng Xiaoyang apologized, I'm sorry, are you unhappy? I should have discussed it with you. But don't worry, you don't need to feel burdened. You can come home with me later. Su Yu took a sip of the milk green tea, feeling warm and sweet all over. The future, which she had never dared to imagine before, suddenly took on a tangible form. It looked like daily meals with Feng Xiaoyang, being together in all seasons, him as the owner, and her as the proprietress, jointly managing a small but beautiful life. Smiling at Feng Xiaoyang, she pretended to casually say, I'm not unhappy, I'm just worried that your mom won't like me, this unemployed wanderer. Feng Xiaoyang was very happy and kissed Su Yu on the face, saying, Great. This month is peak season. Let's wait until next month, and I'll take you home. Su Yu sighed with relief, thinking, This is it. After meeting Feng Xiaoyang's family, I'll break ties with Li Jun. While secretly dating Feng Xiaoyang, Su Yu continued to stall Li Jun, using health examinations as an excuse. Balancing both sides was not easy, and Su Yu suffered greatly. She anxiously awaited the day when Feng Xiaoyang would take her home and solidify their relationship. On days when Li Jun visited frequently, Su Yu had no choice but to come up with an excuse, pretending to visit her hometown, while staying at home to deal with Li Jun. When Li Jun went on a business trip, Su Yu hurriedly headed to the milk tea shop. The milk tea shop remained the same, but Feng Xiaoyang seemed a bit melancholic. When Su Yu saw him, he only greeted her faintly. Feeling uneasy, so you couldn't help asking, Feng Xiaoyang, what's wrong? You're not upset because I haven't been here with you recently, are you? Feng Xiaoyang sat down on the steps, his hands resting weakly on his knees. After a while, he looked up at Su Yu and choked out, Su Yu, my dad is sick, late stage liver cancer. Su Yu was shocked and quickly embraced Feng Xiaoyang. What can we do? What did the doctor say? Don't be sad, we'll find a way to treat him. Feng Xiaoyang cried, no matter what the doctor says, even if there's a glimmer of hope, I have to treat my dad. Su Yu reassured him, exactly. We must treat him. Feng Xiaoyang continued, but it requires a lot of money. We don't have much at home, and I'm not well off. Targeted therapy drugs are expensive. He looked at Su Yu, saying, I've thought about it for a long time and decided to sell the milk tea shop. Money can be earned again, but I only have one father. Su Yu, who had little understanding of parental love, still sympathized with Feng Xiaoyang's choice. However, for some reason, the fervor derived from love in her body cooled down in an instant. She hugged Feng Xiaoyang, caressing his back, comforting him while secretly thinking, to treat his father's illness, Feng Xiaoyang has to sell the milk tea shop. What about if my mother gets sick? What will she sell? And what about me if I get sick? Poverty is really frightening. The milk tea shop was quickly sold, and Feng Xiaoyang received the money, preparing to take Su Yu back to his hometown. The day before leaving, Su Yu accompanied Feng Xiaoyang to buy local specialties. During lunch, Feng Xiaoyang shared many things about his family with Su Yu. Su Yu listened absent-mindedly, with only one thought in her mind, this trip with Feng Xiaoyang was of great significance and would determine the course of her life. That night, she couldn't sleep. In the first half of the night, she imagined the life with Feng Xiaoyang after marriage. In the second half, she thought about a lifetime bought with a possible three million from Li Jun. As dawn broke, she finally saw herself clearly. If she could endure the life Feng Xiaoyang offered her, she wouldn't have laid beneath Li Jun in the first place. She was someone who sought comfort, fantasized about fidelity and beauty, didn't want to give anything, but wanted everything. Train station, bustling with people. Feng Xiaoyang stood at the ticket checkpoint, gradually moving forward with the crowd. 
He kept looking towards the security checkpoint, but Suyu's figure was nowhere to be seen. No answer to calls, no response on WeChat. He seemed to understand something. Passengers behind him urged him to hurry through the ticket check. He chuckled at his own expense, took out his ID, and passed through the gate. While waiting for the train on the platform, he received a breakup message from Suyu. The train roared in, and sorrow was instantly dispersed. In this vast city, in the long journey of life, a breakup didn't really matter. In the evening, Feng Xiaoyang arrived home, wholeheartedly taking care of his father. Three days later, his father suffered organ failure, departing from this world. The life-saving money from selling the shop remained untouched. Another three days passed, and the funeral rites for his father were completed. In just a few days, Feng Xiaoyang experienced the ups and downs of life and, exhausted, climbed to the rooftop for some solitude. He gazed at the deep night sky, twinkling with stars. Longing surged and spread. At this moment, he wished so much to embrace Suyu. Unable to overcome his pride, he opened Suyu's WeChat, made a voice call, but received no answer. Disappointed, he withdrew and absent-mindedly opened an active WeChat group. Everyone was discussing a video. He scrolled up to find the forwarded chat records and was shocked when he opened it. It was a video of the legal wife beating the mistress, and the half-naked mistress in the video was none other than Suyu, whom he couldn't forget. Many people were revealing Suyu's actions as a mistress in the chat records. Unable to bear it, Feng Xiaoyang closed the screen. The man who hadn't shed a tear for his father's death was now crying like a child. He felt his heart ache. In this moment, he truly experienced heartbreak. All innocence was uprooted, and in this April of the human world, there was no vitality.